was this autobiographical at all? Uh, I, okay, so I think the best way to answer this was that it you know, has some autobiographical elements to it, but the way that he set it up was that he created these characters, and then you go into the scene and say, this is what's going to happen in the scene, and then we would shoot that. So obviously there was there were plenty of auto, autobiographical elements. Like he was saying in the beginning about this movie, you know, the, the, how do you put it, the comedy? Tell the truth. Oh, right. Tell me. Yeah. True to life. True to life. But obviously, it's, there's a lot of stuff that's just not true. So, <laughs> <tip was that. laughs> yeah, we made up a lot of stuff. But it was really fun to like exaggerate different qualities, which was part of it. You know, for me, playing a neurotic New York film director was, was just fun. Yeah. You know, like going like, when we went on the set. For, uh, I mean, on the, uh, we went to Universal, took Sean with me, and that was an actual pitch in MTV. Paramount. Yeah, Paramount. Um, so, so yeah. I mean, some a lot of a lot of the stuff was real, but that other stuff, obviously, we we just we just kind of made it up. I didn't really try to kill myself. <laughs> why was why did you shelve this for like nearly twenty years? I think we didn't. He didn't really know what it was for a long time. I mean, he was doing other things. It didn't. It, Seem like it had any commercial value. It was something that he was you know, the, that was sort of an experimental thing, and we were so, you know, it was it was sort of a way to just make a movie, you know. And he was making TV shows and other films, and yeah. those, you know. So I, I don't think it was worth anything up until now because it was such a document of that time. What happened after the film wrapped? After it wrapped. You know, it took us four months to shoot it. I showed it to an editor in New York, and she kind of threw up her hands. Like, I don't know what to do with this. <laughs> like, well, to be honest, I don't really know what to do with it either. Matt, I think you have to cut it. No one else can cut this film. So I figured it out. So, you know, I don't recommend trying this at home. <laughs> you know? I know? Some movies just, they happen really quickly. Shoot it, and it just edits itself. Other films, it's a different process. And then you get films like this. Marty Scorsese once said to me, did you know that long post-production is a sign of genius? And I'm like, I must be brilliant. <laughs> 16 years to finish this thing. <laughs> but I, I know I'm not a genius, though. It just took me longer. How did you shoot this? How did I shoot it? You know, I had a, yeah, like the beginning of the movie. I had a, I had a, I had a Sony Handycam. No, it was, it was a Sony Handycam. I just held it at the end of my arm. He literally walked around like that everywhere. Yeah, you remember I had the, a wide-angle lens attached to it so that I could get... That's why we all look so weird with the big noses and stuff. He literally walked around everywhere with that camera attached to him. Like, like I never saw him any other way, just like that. How did you do the sound? That See, that's just the microphone on the camera. But because the camera is so close to me, because it's only this far away, it's really clean. The sound is pretty clean, I thought. Did you guys understand yeah. all the dialogue? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, pretty, it's pretty clean. Did you guys like the music? That's all John Horn, wall to wall John Horn. <laughs> he, wrote the, uh, he wrote the theme song for it, the nice little. That was another song. thing that Matt had the music chosen before we shot, so he would actually bring the music with him. So in the car scenes, he would play it and over and over and <laughs> over and over again. So that's why you have Sean and all of us sitting in the car, like, bobbing our heads to the song. So he had, he had already chosen the music before we shot it. So when you were asking if it, if it was autobiographical, that was the type of direction that Matt gave us. He gave us music, he gave us character names, he gave us um, some scene outlines, things like that. What about the narration? Is it still 1990s narration, or did you rewrite that? In oh yeah, I, I did this this I, this narration did not exist. I did not. This idea of me talking about what happened is new. So originally, you had an actual narrative film, and it became what kind of a film? Yeah, it was like a narrative film that like came apart the scenes. It was supposed to be this great love story, but there was no love. <laughs> Do you, do you think that you would do um, well, uh, some version of a, of a reunion piece? Oh, we have... Kind we of have, a, an epilogue. Oh, we could. 
Matt, yeah, uh, would you ever consider like maybe like bringing this to like film school to like 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 Plus show like, show it to like film students as, as a way for them to learn about filmmaking or or oh, yeah. Joel asks, did we ever think about bringing it to film school? We did today, right? We brought it down to you guys. Yeah. Right there. Film students. Film Academy? We took it to NYU. We took it to NYU and showed it to them. Oh. I've corrupted them forever. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, we've succeeded. They were already corrupt. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Yeah. 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 Thank <laughs> you.